Atlanta, Georgia, the birthplace of the civil rights movement, the home of Black Hollywood. Even they weren't immune to the violent protests that took place after the George Floyd murder. We spoke to Atlanta residents to get their perspective on the riots and the aftermath. There needs to be a plan of action. The um, MLK and all those um, men and women, Southern Leadership Conference, they had a plan for how they protested. They didn't go in to um, destroy cities and we're going to destroy Birmingham, we're going to destroy Montgomery. They didn't, Rosa Parks didn't go set the bus station on fire. We need to figure out some way to sit down and say, if you're going to protest, do it peacefully and this is the way. Let's look back and see how this group did it. Instead of saying, okay, let's do things the way people are expected to do things, which is, you know, talk to people and try to get an understanding of what is going wrong so that you can come to a solution. You were instead encouraged to do more things to break the law and I guess get, get in trouble with the very people you claim are hurting you without cause. What happened to George Floyd was unfortunate. Nobody should have to go through that. That, that was wrong, most definitely. But I think it was even a bigger tragedy that we were burning up our own cities because of one instance that was publicized. So do you think that those riots helped or hurt uh, the cause of trying to actually fix the problem? It definitely didn't help, it hurt. And we just burned down our own businesses. So how was that helping? What was the point? What was the end result? Like, what was the end result of the riots? What were they hoping to achieve? I don't, what made them stop? When was the end game? I still don't know that. I think it kind of hurt us, it hurt us, and just destroying mostly black owned businesses. And, um, and then they're just like, oh, they're going, you know, if they think people think a certain way, the people that um, think like that, well, they're just blacks, they're gonna, they're crazy and they're gonna destroy and steal anyway. So they're just proving maybe their stereotype right. So I think it just hurt us more than it helped. And I think we should have, um, like I said, they, if they were gonna protest, do it in an orderly, non-violent way. But of course they didn't and it didn't help. And still places that are recovering from all of that damage. And so I don't think it helped. Could have found the better way. But then on the other hand, everybody's like, why are they protesting? Why are they doing this? Well, it's because we, we, they haven't been heard. People, don't, they don't feel like they've been listened to and nobody cares. And so that's why I said we need that dialogue. In Atlanta, the crime rate has skyrocketed with a 60% jump in homicides from 2019 to 2020. And 2022 is already outpacing the numbers from 2021. We even spoke to someone who was robbed and assaulted during that period of time. I was walking on my way to work like every other day. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and it was during the All George Flag summer, you know, the riots, all that situation. I was walking to work through a very nice neighborhood here in Bucket, near to Atlanta. And it was 6 a.m., like I told you. I noticed like a very suspicious truck, you know, driving around. And I was like, oh, this is odd. Usually there are no cars at the time of the day. So I kept walking, you know. Uh, the truck kept driving around next to me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to call 911, you know, just to make sure, uh, because this is suspicious. So I noticed that the four people in the car were like black. So I was like, okay, I'm not calling 911 because they're going to say that I'm a racist or something. So I stopped calling 911. I kept walking and the next thing I know, this car stopped in front of me. One guy came out of the car and two other guys came in the back of me. The first guy knocked me in the head to the ground and the other guy started kicking me. You know, one guy keeps punching my head, my face, keeps punching it. 
they wanted to knock me down to, to take all my stuff, but I was kind of resisting, you know. The other one was kicking me on the left side, the other one was trying to pull off my stuff. Eventually, I was screaming for help, so one neighbor came out of his house to assist me. So he called the police, he kind of helped me out, and then the police arrived, but they took all of my stuff. Keys, cell phone, you know, everything. All the neighbors were really shocked because I mean, this is the first time that something like this happened in this, this neighborhood of Atlanta, you know? So, yeah, it was bad. After the riots in 2020, the organization and their allies set their sights on a new target, the Georgia voting law. Falsely accusing it of being Jim Crow 2.0, the organized opposition to the law led to Major League Baseball pulling out of hosting the All-Star Game in Atlanta costing the city's majority black business community an estimated $100 million in lost business. We spoke with a local business leader about the impact. The vendors uh, who service the stadium here in Atlanta are minority. And um, that game, that all-star game was pulled out of Atlanta, supposedly, as a result of outrage by MLB about a voting law or a new legislation that they claim to that they claim would hurt minorities, and yet they cut off minorities' noses despite their faces by pulling out a major income source for those minority businesses around the stadium. So it was one of those. Um, uh, I guess sort of Damocles where they wanted to be, you know, it's, it's virtue signal, you know, there was nothing true about their position and about that legislation. There was nothing in it that w caused uh, to block voters from voting, nothing. And so they were virtue signaling in this whole culture of wokeness to say that they're doing something on behalf of minorities here in Atlanta, when in fact, they harmed the minorities here far worse than the major, than the all-star game would have would have done if were it held here. Critics of the voting law claimed that it would suppress the vote, but in the 2022 Georgia primary, turnout went up, with black voters reporting no issues in casting their ballots. No matter the city, the story stays the same. A movement born out of genuine concern for the plight of African Americans was hijacked by people who left destruction, chaos, and confusion in their wake. That is the aftermath. So, talk about what happened uh, yeah. when you went to the doctor. Well, I, I went to my office. I didn't want to call a police because, uh, I mean, to call an ambulance because I didn't want to pay, you know, all that. But my office was like, you need to go to the doctor because sometimes when you're in shock and with the adrenaline, you don't feel the pain, but you could have like a broken bone or something. So I went to the doctor's office. When, when you go to the type of ER's office, you need to fill up some forms. And there's like a box that says, uh, are you the victim of a crime? If you fill up that box, the doctor needs to fill like an application for the police, which implies more work, you know? So when the doctor came to my office, to the private, you know, to the nurse office, whatever, he was like, oh my God, why do you fill up that form? I mean, that means that I have to do more work. And he was kind of mad at me because of that situation. So he was like, oh, I'm seeing that you're Mexican and that you are you were beating down and rough. Oh, were, you, were they Trump supporters? And he was kind of making fun of that situation. And I was like, no, actually, they were BLM supporters per se. So that was kind of sad. I felt kind of, I mean, He's supposed to check my health, he doesn't need to know who beat me down, you know, but 